Hello Gemini friends, I'm Annie Botticelli and welcome to my Gemini July 2021 Astrology Must Knows. Definitely go to AnnieHelpsYou.com to see the long and growing list of free goodies that I have for you each month so you don't miss anything. And if you'd love to be a professional astrologer or use astrology for other professional purposes or just to expand your own usage and knowledge to help yourself and your family and friends, you will love my Becoming a Professional Astrologer Mastery course, which you can see at my online school, LoomLife.com, L U umelife.com. This is another very exciting month for Geminis. Obviously, we're in this crazy activation period of your highest destiny, clearing up karma and stepping into your highest expression in this lifetime. Since the eclipses are in your sign and in your opposing sign of Sagittarius. Now, while we don't have an actual eclipse this month, we are still in eclipse season from the May and June eclipses. These eclipses are astronomical events and they take place at the moment that they happen. And they are astrological events that have a long storyline of what they're working on and our being, which is very complex. So this is a period of time that is really game-changing for Geminis and this month is still a carryover of the active period. So to best use this video, know that this video is for you, whether your sun is in Gemini, your moon, your rising, your Mercury, your Venus, your Mars, whatever you watch for, and you can get quite complex. Astrology is as complex as each individual is, and each individual is as complex as the whole universe. So the deeper you get into it, the more fascinating it is, and just know that this is for you if you have any Gemini placements. The second thing is if you're a late degree Gemini, so if your birthday is like June 13th through the rest of the sign or 20 to 29 degree Gemini placement and the later into that spectrum and the later into June you are, the more this is true, that I also recommend that you watch my cancer report. You late degree people have a more complex read and I know this because I have my moon and my sun as late degree placements in different signs, which is how I learned this. So you've got to work a little more to get your um, more full picture astrologically. So I recommend you watch Gemini and and cancer reports for those late degree people. Okay, so let's talk about our must knows. The first brilliant, exciting must know this month is that we are stepping out of that retrograde energy that was the second half of May, all of June, and the early trickling part of July. And so what that means is we're stepping into this time of what I call open stars for launches, big decisions, momentum, and it's very, very exciting. So if things had gotten called into question, if plans kept changing, if things were uncertain and you couldn't plan more than, you know, a step ahead of you, then this is a time where things should become more clear from the astrological perspective and hopefully that will filter into your life as well. So there are many things that can be done within this window and that are well indicated to do within this window. And the window starts around July 7th and runs until around July, I mean all around September 8th or so. So basically most of July, all of August, and the early part of September is this brilliant time to do stuff with the information that came to you over the last few months and to activate these major changes that have been coming for a long time and now have the stars to move forward. More things that are very well supported during this brilliant launch period from around July 7th or around September 8th are engagements, weddings, big parties, travel, major plans, big agreements, major expensive purchases, redesign, redecorating, anything having to do with agreements, starting new businesses, adding different divisions onto businesses, looking for jobs, finding jobs, changing work, anything bold, anything important, moving, like your physical house where you live, your housing, selling houses, buying houses, anything like that, investing, all of those types of things are the things that are amazing to do in this brilliant launch period from around July 7th through around September 8th, kind of those, those dates in there. So basically most of July, all of August, and the first part of September is just free flow in the stars. While the bulk of the eclipse news will have come in in May and June, you might still be getting news in this month. So we're calling that like after quakes, after the eclipses. And to get a more full picture of the types of changes that you might see as a Gemini, definitely watch my May and June reports because I go into details about where each eclipse is for each Gemini 
created a lot of resources around helping you understand this eclipse cycle. So refer back to that to get a more fuller picture of the eclipse cycle and how those changes can affect you. Another major must know is that we've got Jupiter in retrograde. Now Jupiter has been cruising through Aquarius, which is in a very favorable placement for Gemini's because it makes a trine with your placement. When planets are in air, they make the most favorable in all of astrology angle, 120 degree angle called a trine. And so you've been having that go on all year. Now we've got a brief dip into Pisces, but it's never leaving Aquarius long or far enough to stop exerting influence where it is, has been in Aquarius. So you're getting little whispers into what its full plummet into Pisces is going to look like, which will be from the end of December in through into like the first half of May of 2022. And this is Jupiter expansion of your career and work. Those of you who are in the early part of the sign, so we'll say May born, um, you're going to feel this the most right now, and you're going to get several passes of Jupiter blessings, those of you um, in the early designation. But everyone has a chance to feel the expansion and growth in their work and career sector starting now and even getting stronger towards the end of this year and in the first part of 2022. What Jupiter in the 10th house can look like is better jobs, employment if you've been looking for it, expansion of an old business, starting of a new business, recognition, anything having to do with carrying your work further, educating yourself so that you can do your job better or changing professions or adding multiple professions. Gemini's love to get their fingers in a lot of pudding pies. And so this might be a time where you diversify your income or diversify your work. Now, those of you who are in the situation where you don't have to work for money, you don't have to earn money or you're retired, this can still mean like a little part-time job to keep you occupied and keep you getting you know, social, um, which Geminis also tend to love, or it can just be your work in the world that has nothing to do with earning income. Things that you share, your gifts that you share, your time that you share, that you're putting out into the world. So you might notice an expansion of those things. Now, Jupiter is not done with the ninth house for you all. So you still have Jupiter expanding that house of Sagittarius, also accented by the eclipses in Sagittarius in Gemini. So the sectors for Geminis of writing, publishing, speaking, any creative project, anything having to do with teaching, learning, um, education, education systems, different countries, different cultures, different languages have all been under Jupiter's domain to expand for you. Spiritual studies, stuff with your church or other religious organizations. And so opportunities may have been abounding and you might see more of that happening now. And this is a trend that is only going to continue for a while to come. Okay, so those of you whose birthdays are around June 15th through the rest of the sign, or if you have a Gemini placement that's between 22 and 29 degrees, you're getting extra kisses as Jupiter goes back into Aquarius in the months to come. So just be aware that um, that you have some extra bonuses coming again if you're in that time frame. Also, you can see more about Jupiter and what it's doing in 2021 for you in my video called Jupiter and Aquarius for Gemini, which you can search for organically or you can go to my homepage. I've got a playlist, a Jupiter and Aquarius playlist. Okay, so another major must know. Oh, by the way, that Jupiter in the ninth house is also about immigration, okay? So if you're working with immigration things or you're trying to move to a different country and COVID's been holding things off, there's still a lot of energy this year that things you're working on, whether it's travel or moves, can work out or jobs, international work, things like that. Okay, so another must know is that we've got a few Pluto oppositions and in general more salty aspects than sweet ones this month, but it's nothing to fear. Just know that there might be some nuisance bumps and they will mostly be that, if not all, because they're, they're planetary arrangements that are made with at least one inner planet, which are the ones that move quickly. So the bump comes and then it passes, the bump comes and then it passes. So you might have to work a little bit to get some of the extra gold at this time, but that's all right. I know that Geminis in general tend to like to be busy, so you might find yourself being busy trying to make um, gold out of any lead that comes to you. This also will be still a carryover of high emotion. The eclipses always bring emotional energies, but because there's so much energy in fire and we still have lingering energy in Gemini in your sign, 
I think that will, will take the edge off of some of the extra emotion and help there to be more balance, which is great because Gemini energies don't like to get bogged down in too heavy of emotion. We want to just, you know, I say we because I'm a Sag and I'm similar in that way, but we like to just keep going, keep positive, keep, you know, keep busy. And, um, but there will be opportunities for you to emotionally connect with others. And this might be very much sought after because you have a chance to definitely deepen your relationships at this time, which can be very exciting. Okay, so we've got a lot of energy in Cancer this month, and this is highlighting your house of money. So you might get boosts to your income. Now this coupled with Jupiter whispering into your 10th house. So remember, although only those of you who are like Mayborn are really going to feel this the strongest with Jupiter in the 10th house, from the Placidus chart perspective, from the whole house chart perspective, every Gemini's 10th house of work and career, which often also links to money, is accentuated. So we've got a double story of money here coming through with your second house being accentuated. And again, this is for all early, middle, and late degree placements. So boost to your income, boost to your self-employment, you know, some side money coming in, somebody giving you back money that they owed you, or some other income boost, raises, things like that could come in, or just expenditures of things that you've been wanting. If you've been wanting a macked out device or a vehicle of some kind or mode of transportation, you are having a lot of support in purchasing those things this month, all right? So if you wanna buy anything that has to do with communication or mobility, then this is a time where that may come in. And you might find that you spend a lot of money on it, but it probably would be something that you really want, okay? Because we've got Mars and Venus in accord. It's rare that this happens. Mars and Venus only go through the same sign for a few weeks at a time every couple of years, and they happen to be in Leo, which happens to accentuate your house of Gemini, which is the house of communication and mobility. Okay, so travel is very strongly highlighted for Gemini placements. You will very likely find yourself traveling, even if it's nearby, even if it's just local, like you're going to certain attractions that are nearby or just busy visiting friends and family. And of course, we don't know the different ever-changing COVID situations in the world. But the energy of movement, the energy of social interactions is very strongly highlighted at this time. And whether it's virtual or in person, you will probably find you're going places and doing things. Okay, let's see what else. Um, you also might find that your writing work or your speaking work is getting a lot of attention because Leo energy tends to bring things out in front of other people. And this is a communication sector. So any way that you communicate or express can be put on display in wonderful ways. Now, if you're a Gemini who is seeking to improve your communication with other people, then this would be an amazing time to do that. And you might have really major breakthroughs with close personal relationships and in general, just people that you can connect with. And doing things like listening to some books on Audible about how to improve your communication for specific purposes are really strongly uh, supported at this time. In general, the energies of water, of Cancer, and the fire of Leo with the Venus and Mars are like this pot of water, which is the emotion, with the fire being the flame, the Leo, bringing things up to a boil. And it can be very, very, very productive. This can be a great time to do something productive with your emotions, productive with your feelings. And of course, I always suggest you try to not act in anger, but if you notice you're having a lot of anger, you might do something about that. Not that you're acting in anger, but that you're working on healing the sources of the anger, and then making some inner decisions to change your circumstances for the better and um, that would be very well supported at this time as well. Okay, so the last thing that I wanna talk about, the last major must know, is that we've got this series of fire and air kisses. And so I wanna give you the dates and talk about um, what you might see from this and then drill down to, sh to tell you who would see even more effects from this. So in general, all Gemini placements can have the potential to see beautiful outcomes from these things I'm going to talk about, okay? July 2nd and July 7th, we have first a Mars, then a Venus. Beautiful trine with Chiron. So that whole first week of the month is really just a story of things that you've healed in the past bringing you fruit now, or things that you are healing right now in the moment that are giving you instant benefits. An example I'm liking to use here about 
a positive aspect with the wounded healer is let's say you cut certain things out of your diet in an effort to have your digestion be better and have you feel better. Well, maybe by doing that, giving your body what it needs or taking out what it doesn't need, maybe you also wind up losing weight and maybe you weren't even trying to do that, but it's a welcome outcome. And so you're getting a boost from something that you did on the front of healing. Okay, so this can be any physical, mental, emotional, spiritual healing, um, and it can be like a major breakthrough that you have with your relationship with yourself or with spirit or with somebody else or your just general relationship to relationship. Then we've got the, oh, oh, and by the way, those of you who are closer to 12 degrees, so we'll say, okay, so that's 17 degrees back. Like the first few days of June, we'll say the last couple of days of May, up until like the first week or so of June, and the closer to 12 degrees, or the closer to around June 2nd, 3rd, 4th, the more of a kiss you get from this. And for the um, degrees, the closer you are to 12 degrees, or we'll go seven to 17 degrees, and as our five degree um, kind of window, and then the closer to 12 degrees, the more intense kiss you get from that. Then, although remember we talked about how Venus and Mars are working in accord, Venus and Mars working in accord are always, it's always reminding me, like when planets are in communication that are like, um, it reminds me of people in your life speaking the same language. Like let's say your spouse and your best friend always tell you different things or give you different advice or have different viewpoints on things that you're doing. And then it's stressful for you because you care about their opinion, you care about them, and you can see both sides. Well, Venus and Mars in the same sign are kind of like having these two forces in your life be in agreement on something. It gives you more certainty, more clarity, more conviction, and more motivation to do something with information because you have that support. So that's happening almost all month. But on the days around July 13th, they are going to be exact in their configuration. So there are extra blessings, especially for those of you near 19 degrees. Okay, so when we're looking at the degree placements, we'll say 14 degrees to 24 degrees, the closer to 19, the more of a kiss you get. And for the birthdays, we'll say, so that's 10 away from there. So like May 10th, 11th, or uh, not May, sorry, um, June 10th, June 11th, um, or we'll say like June 5th through June 15th or 16th and the closer to June 10th, June 11th, then the more intense the kiss from there. Then the last notable fire and air connection we have is in the days around July 17th, we've got the full moon in Aquarius. And so this is a full moon in your element. And so of course we have extra blessings that come when that that um, moon aspect is speaking your airy language. And so that can benefit all Gemini placements, but those of you right at the beginning, like the May 20th, 21st, 22nd, 23rd, 24th, kind of around there, or the first like zero to five or six degrees, you all will get the most kisses from that full moon. You might get a blessing from a friend, you know, social um, situations, boosts to your um, internet presence or your social circles or anything having to do with Aquarius. If you would like even more information about the starry opportunities ahead, then definitely go to AnnieHelpsYou.com and sign up for my free email newsletter list. I only send out a few emails a month and they are all chock full of how you can make the most of the starry opportunities. Plus you get all kinds of other VIP freebies and extra exclusive things by being a member of my email list. Since most of the work I do for you is free, it's hard to sometimes keep track of everything I do. I do have information when you click on the more button in, um, on this video, or if you're listening to the podcast version in the notes underneath the podcast, you can connect in with all of these free things I do, the podcast, the videos, the blogs, the interviews, and all kinds of goodies. And now at AnnieHelpsYou.com, right on the front page, I have a better organized list of all of these resources so you can check that monthly and be taking advantage of all the things I do for you. If you would like to be an astrologer as your profession, make sure that you go to LoomLife.com, L-U-M-E, Life.com, my school, Luminous Life Multiversity. You will find free courses there as well, 
and you will find my paid courses. And one of the paid courses is this astrology program, Becoming a Professional Astrologer Mastery Course. If you think I put a lot of details into my free offerings, you should see what I do in my paid offerings. It's really, really, really comprehensive. So I can definitely teach you everything you need to know to be a successful professional astrologer earning money for your love for astrology. So I hope you have a wonderful month and I'll see you next month. Bye.